This video is brought to you by All Parts. All Parts is necks, bodies, bridges, and so much more. Visit today at allparts.com. Hello everyone, welcome to Groom Guitars. I'm the repair shop manager, Greg Voros, and with me is my shop foreman, Tony Nagy. Also with us is Premier Guitar, and they're gonna be hanging all day today while we get into some pretty serious repair work. I will be refretting this gorgeous 1959 ES335. And I'll be refretting this 1959 Fender Stratocaster. That sounds like a day's work. Let's get to it, buddy. I went ahead and stripped the instrument down, but not before I took some measurements, okay? Um, I wanted to see uh, how the neck would flex under, under string tension and where it would flex and how the truss rod actually worked. These are all important things to keep in mind before planing the board and replacing the frets, okay? Um, some folks are, are, are using the Plex machine, the neck jig. Those are all awesome. We use the neck jig here at, at the Groom Repair Shop as well. In the case of a, a 335 from 1959 or vintage golden period 335s, I've done in, enough of these where I know exactly uh, how the necks move and how they flex in varying points. 335s are pretty straightforward and I know exactly where they have a tendency of flexing. I'll be mindful of that when I go ahead and dress the board uh, by taking a very little material off the fingerboard to true it up as I need to have it as the foundation before I go ahead and lay my frets in there. Okay, so let's get to work. I'll pull the frets now. Now that I've disassembled the Stratocaster, I just wanted to talk for a second about removing these frets. When the, uh, when the neck was manufactured, the fret wire was inserted from the base side and just driven into the slot that way. And to remove them, what I'm going to do is just continue pushing that fret out the treble side that way. It's been my experience that it causes the least amount of tear out and damage to the fingerboard. And I made a very specific tool uh, for doing that. I've taken a little uh, screwdriver and, and created a little edge that can grab the fret and the other edges that are near the fingerboard, I've smoothed them off so they're safe so they don't mar the fingerboard in any way. And I'll just push that fret on out the side. And one thing that we do a lot when we um, take frets out is we heat them up so that it'll make the wood contract and uh, then it's easier to pull them out. Well, in this method, I do not heat up the frets because if there's anything that could cause adhesion in the, in the fret slot, what it might do is reflow it and then it'll harden again before I get the fret out of the side. So I just try to knock these out dry and um, this is the best way I've found. Also I have these little jigs here where I've got the, the neck safely snugged in here so that I can knock the frets out of the side. So every, every, every fret job is really a compression refret. You always have to be mindful of how the frets go in and how they compress the board um, with regards to the truss rod and what the truss rod is able to do or not do. Um, so all of it is manipulating the neck and the fingerboard to do exactly what you want it to do. And the name of the game is to take the minimal amount off of the fingerboard as humanly possible. This way, coming back, I can 
really uh, dial in my tang and the barbs to seat into the slot in a beautiful way where it's nice and tight, but it's not necessarily compressing the neck back on me, okay? So on this one, that's gonna be key. All right, guys. Here's the part where I consider the condition of the fingerboard before I put in the new frets. What I've done is I've reattached the neck to the body because it's in a different shape that way. And also, I've got the neck propped up on something so that the weight of the body creates a little bit of string tension as I true up the board. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so just before I went ahead and waxed up the entire board and glued every single fret in, I made sure to come back and seat every single fret. Uh, I wanted to make sure not only was it laying nice and beautifully flush down to the board, matching the radius, but I also, I always come back and I listen to the fret itself. And you can actually hear the fret when it's not fully seated, it gives you this thud of a sound. Well, every time that note gets played, you actually hear it. It doesn't, it's not a full sounding note in that way. So I always come back and I listen to each fret after I already installed it. As I finish up dressing these frets, I just wanted to make mention for those of you who are doing refrets that uh, you really have to tend to how much you bevel these frets. You want to do the least amount of bevel as possible and still make the edges of the fingerboard feel comfortable because uh, that bridge spacing on these old instruments brings the strings right out to the edge of the fingerboard. And if you over bevel them or you round them off while you're crowning them, what's going to happen is when you're playing the instrument, the string's going to slip off the edge and we don't want that to happen. So you want as much playing surface as possible. <laughs> That's a couple of really good looking fret jobs there, Tony. Nice job. For Premier Guitar and Groom Guitars, until next time. Yeah.